So um, this is Ellen. I'm the uh, Northeast and Mid-Atlantic Field uh, Manager. And then we've got Caroline. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Caroline Rafael Blanco. I'm the South and Southwest Regional Manager. And I am uh, able to record the call, so I will be sending perfect. the recording out. Thanks. Thanks, Caroline. Um, Alyssa, are you on the call yet? Yes, I'm on the call. Oh, great. Hi, Alyssa. You want to introduce Yeah. Alyssa McClelland, uh, State Coordinator in California. Great. Good to see you. Good to hear you. I almost said good to see you. <laughs> um, Andrea? Yes. Yeah. Would you introduce yourself so everybody can hear your voice? I was going to say, here, here, like in school, this is Andrea Sharp. I'm the Georgia State Coordinator. Great. Thanks, Andrea. Um, Claire? Hi. Um, this is Claire from Kentucky. Great. Hannah? Hannah, are you on the call? Hi, is this Hannah? Maybe not. Okay, Kelly? Hi, this is Kelly from North Carolina. Great. Thanks, Kelly. Kim? Hi, this is Kim from New York. Great. Hi, Kim. Uh, Michelle? Sorry, I, mute. I did mute myself. This is Michelle in Texas. Hi, Michelle. And then last, we have Stephanie on the call. Hi, it's Stephanie Akoniak, um, State Coordinator for Colorado. Perfect. And is there anyone that's on the call that I didn't um, introduce? Um, I don't know if you can hear me. This is Annie from Pennsylvania. Great. Thanks. Hi, Annie. And hi. anyone hey. else? Hi. Oh, yes. hi. It's Hannah from Indiana. Great. Hi, Hannah. Hi. And Kristen from Ohio, but I'm only on the phone. I'm not able to be on my computer. No problem. That's, I'm glad you let us know that you're on because we don't... We can't see you on there, so oh, so we have Annie, Kristen, and uh, Hannah. And Hannah, we knew it's on. Okay, uh, so the only I think we've got everybody on the call. So, like I said, if your phone um, seems like there's a lot of background noise, you can track it to your phone. Just mute yourself. But we're going to pretty much keep it open so that we can talk amongst ourselves. The so really the purpose of this call was really to try to provide any additional TA that we can from nationals, um, from Caroline and myself, um, to help recruit breakfast grants. Um, we have done our final approvals of our breakfast grants. And uh, for those that have been submitted through uh, end of May, um, and maybe the first couple that might have come in in early June. Um, and so we've turned those over to Amy and Rob for final uh, approval before we start changing them on um, our back end and get getting them ready for emails to be distributed um, next Friday. So uh, as you've seen the masters, you know who we're funding pretty much at this point, who um, were no's, who were maybes, and we've worked really hard with so many of you to move those schools from the, the maybe category to the fund category. So thanks for all the hard work. Um, I, I think we've made huge strides from where we were in the early May to where we are now. Um, we're still looking at a good number of schools that we need to recruit. We have a number of states that have deliverables related to um, their uh, funding for the universal breakfast grants that we really need to help um, give some ideas to them maybe or some other strategies. So. We're hoping that we can do some review of where we are and then what we need to do to move forward. And then we can really tap into your expertise because we can give some suggestions and some ideas. Um, but we're hoping that you guys can really provide more of the opportunity to share your experiences on what's worked. We know when things don't work. Um, but if they haven't worked and then you turn it into a positive, that's a really good lesson learned. Um, you know, uh, we don't want this to be a, oh, well, this school doesn't want it, or oh, this school doesn't want it, because that's not going to get us anywhere. So if, if you found that you, you've had the no answer, but you turned it into a yes, we'd love to hear that story. Um, so some of the slides that we have, I have a couple of visuals, um, and we're really not going to spend too much time on it, just kind of review the grant itself. 
Um, so we have in all of our states uh, the alternative breakfast model for $1,400 in funding. Um, it can have, even though the grant says 50% or greater, it, it can be in a 40% range depending upon the school. Um, the larger the school, the better, but we will fund smaller schools. Um, our target deliverable to our funder is based on breakfast served. So if we, the, the more students we can reach, it, we can have ultimately fewer schools. And if that happens, then we'll have to kind of figure out what to do if we give them extra money or if we do something different with any extra funds that we have left over. Um, but what we can do, though, is that the bigger the schools, like when we get a big school that comes in with like 2,000 students in the high school, we can then fund some smaller schools too because it's really all about um, the number of students being able to reach. And our goal is like 2 million or 2.2 million. I can't remember exactly. Um, but when we're talking about that many, it it's creates a lot of breakfast. Um, let's talk about this grant for a second. Does anyone have a question on what this grant is or anything to do about um, you know a, a good school or good target for these schools or anything like that. Okay, so um, if you have a question, throw it out. And if you have a thought, throw it out. This school, this could be one school in a district. This could be 20 schools in a district. It really depends on what they need and what they want to have happening at that school, that school, school district. So it depends on who you're working with. You could be working individually with one school, or you can be working with um, a district and bringing in a couple of schools. And then the strategy there would be is if they have three schools that they're saying, okay, I have three schools I want funding for, well, then maybe see if there's a couple more that we could do. Because what we have under this grant is really two grants. It's a district grant, which is five or more schools, and then a school level grant. So if we can, we have to fill in all of these, but if they can bring in multiple schools, that's, that's perfect too, because we can make sure they get funding. Um, then we have our universal breakfast grants. Now, these are only in these states. Obviously, you guys, we've been here, we've done that, you know what's what's in your state. Um, the 60% or, or greater of free and reduced is really um, based on the school. The school might say they can um, they can serve universal breakfast to all students um, that, you know, with 55% based on their cost uh, breakdown. So the biggest key here is understanding, and I think still there's some confusion, that these grants are universal and alternative. So they could already have had a universal model, and now they're adding alternatives, so that's what the grant is going to be focusing on. Or maybe they are um, already had an alternative model. Maybe they had a grab and go, but now they're making it universal because they're going to community eligibility or they're, um, you know, they're in a state where there's um, more focus on universal breakfast. So it could be either of those, or maybe they're adding both. Now, they, we do know that there are some schools that are, have been doing universal and alternative, and they're not at that 85% goal mark, um, which is the target for these grants. So those could still come in if there's a plan in place to move them to that 85%, or there's enough opportunity for growth. So if they're at an 83% ADP, it's really not worth it for us to give them $2,500 or you know whatever we're going to give them to impact breakfast because it's not going to make that big of a difference. But if they're at say 75% or 70%, they're a good candidate for you know to add something more to their um, existing model. So maybe they need to add in um, maybe they're serving all cold breakfast and maybe they want to serve um, a hot and breakfast too, so they need some hot serving at, on their kiosks, or they need some hot service breakfast in the classroom um, delivery carts, or maybe you know some other strategies that they came up with, or maybe they need another kiosk in another location at their school. Those are all things that they could do 
um, to impact their breakfast participation. So let's talk about this for a second. And before we go on to talk too much more, anybody have a question as to what would or could a universal breakfast grant look like? Ellen, I was just going to say, Ellen, if you also wanted Annie. To, oh, 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 let me just add real quick, Annie. Um, if you wanted to touch on Ellen, um, school's current breakfast ADP, because we also look at that when uh, determining eligibility as well. Yeah, sure. So um, before, you know, Annie, you asked your question, let me just get this one out. Um, so before a school should apply, you really have, it, it's great to have those conversations rather than say, here's the link, go ahead and start it, um, because maybe they're at 85% or 90%. They should not go and submit an application because there's no way they're already at their target. We're not funding those. And unfortunately, we had good handfuls of schools in different states where they went and did the applications and went through the whole process and they had 93% ADP. Um, so really anything that's in that maybe 50 to 75 range, that, those are more the ideals. When they start going too much lower in current ADP, um, unless they're really adding some new models in place, then it, it's going to be a struggle to move them from, say, 30 percent to 85. But if they're putting in a breakfast in the classroom and an alternative, then we know that they, can, they have likelihood that they could get there. But we really want to be careful about um, putting in applications that we're not going to be able to fund. So anything that would be really, anything over, say, 75 percent might be something that we wouldn't be able to fund. And definitely anything over that target of 85 percent. We're not funding, so. Um, Annie, what was your question? Um, you pretty much answered it. It was sort of the, I just needed you to repeat the range of sort of the, the schools we're looking to apply, um, you know, or if there are any. You know, I have a couple of schools that I think we might be able to, um, that are already doing, doing universal. They're implementing an alternative model, and I just wanted you to repeat the, um, Sort of where their ADP is now, in order for to make them eligible, but but you did so. Yeah, and I think in, in that respect, um, anything that's below seventy five percent, seventy, you know, really, I would say seventy five percent would be the cutoff. And then as long as their plan is something that's really going to demonstrate how they're going to bump them up, you know, if they've been doing breakfast in the classroom. What are they going to do differently? If they've been doing a grab and go, what are they going to do differently? Maybe they're going to add, maybe they're going to change their um, delivery spot. Maybe they're going to add a spot. Maybe they need to um, open up another opportunity to have their kiosk somewhere else. Oh, my phone is dying. I'm going to switch my phones here as we're talking. Um, any other questions? All right, so Caroline, if I could cut off, I want you to go ahead and um, I'm going to move the screen to the next screen if you would talk about strategies, and I'll touch back, back, yeah, back in. Um, before I go into detail, I'll let Ellen talk about the community elig eligibility. Um, but I did send an email out to everyone, so you should have received an email from me regarding um, doing additional outreach or recruiting for Universal Breakfast because that is our primary focus as well as breakfast expansion. So we want you to definitely reach out to all um, previously funded schools. Um, the whole point in working with our pilot schools, our 100 pilot schools last year was to really expand within their district. Um, as Ellen and I were finalizing grant recommendations, um, we realized that out of the 45 districts that were funded last year, only 13 have reapplied for expanding within their district for universal breakfast. So I encourage you all to reach out to your previously funded schools again to see if they have any additional schools within their district that uh, they're interested in basically duplicating the pilot program that they implemented last year as part of their universal breakfast. Also, any schools that applied last year for the breakfast expansion grant and now they're interested 
in moving to the universal model or adding an alternative component, we can fund them for universal breakfast. So if they were previously funded last year for universal breakfast, we can't fund them again. So I know we've stated that previously, but if they were um, funded last year for share breakfast, and they were doing breakfast expansion, but now they're interested in doing universal breakfast, those schools can apply for universal breakfast. Um, any new districts that are applying are eligible to receive up to 2,500. So we are trying to fund as much as we can per school. So they may receive the full 2,500. They may receive you know, a little bit less than that, but we're trying to fund each of our new districts, our new schools within our district as much as we can up to the 2,500. Um, also, as a reminder, uh, please reach out to all of the physical activity awarded schools. So any schools that applied for the physical activity grants that were awarded or even non-awarded schools, um, prior we were not able to fund a school for both physical activity and breakfast grants, but now we can um, because we need to increase our numbers for breakfast grant um, application. So because they're already in our system, we already have a working relationship with them. You possibly have already connected with the primary school contact. Connect with that school again and see if they are interested in also implementing a, a breakfast expansion or universal breakfast program. Have them put you in touch with the food service director or another contact within the school. Um, also looking to see if that school would be eligible. So if they have already a 90% breakfast ADP, then they wouldn't necessarily be eligible. So look at all your physical activity awarded and non-awarded schools. Um, we really want to try to focus with a lot of the schools that are in our network and see how we can continue working with them. So last year's breakfast expansion schools, last year's universal breakfast district to expand, and physical activity schools um, to do continuous outreach to for throughout the summer. Um, you can also see on the school grants webpage we've updated the date. So the May 30th deadline is now changed to June 30th, and they will be put on um, the second round of as far as funding, the second round for the July 18th award notification as well. So we're, we're processing all of the applications that came in in May, and their first installment checks will be issued once they complete their MOA. So that's our primary focus now, as well as continuing to do additional outreach. So I just wanted to add that. Um, does anyone have any questions about those three avenues for additional outreach? Caroline, this is Andrea. Um, my phone cut off for a second. Can you um, repeat who cannot be considered for funding again this year? Sure, sure. So any schools that were previously funded for the 2013-2014 school year for universal breakfast, they are not eligible to apply for either the breakfast expansion or universal breakfast. Um, grants, current grants. So really only the universal breakfast awardees from last year are not eligible. But if a school within that district is interested in expanding to an ad additional school within their district, then those schools would be eligible. But only the previously funded universal breakfast grants are, are not eligible. OK, thank you. Yeah. Is there anyone that has made that connection with any schools that um, were a physical activity grant um, and can kind of walk us through some strategies that you went through when, you know, communicating with them? Claire, are you still on the call? I am. Um, in our situation, we had a uh, an effort at the district level that was wanting to apply for breakfast grants, and at the same time, there was a discussion from a school, a specific school for a physical activity grant, and the 
food service director um, did not want to impede the, the any efforts for the physical activity grant, so that they with shall we say did not include that school in their overall district wide effort. Um, that school was approved for funding as a physical activity grant school, and now that the uh, ruling has been made to allow schools to apply for both, they are now being included within the district's efforts. So um, it really was at the initiative of the the um, food service director for a district-wide effort. Yeah. And they were and pleased to be able to include all of the schools now. Yeah, and that's exactly what kind of spurred this whole which, so to speak, in terms of um, we had, you know, a district that we've been working with in Georgia, and um, they were bringing on new schools, and she went to, uh, and the food service director went to enter the application and found that she couldn't submit it because the school had already submitted a physical activity grant. So then we were like, oh, well, you know, are they getting funded? Are they not getting funded? Well, it turned out they were getting funded. So then we're like, well, that kind of stinks because, you know, here they're being funded for physical activity, which is great, but they could also be funded for breakfast, which would be great, and they're really separate entities, so that's where it really kind of, as we examined it closer, it was like, okay, maybe this is a, a good thing. We're obviously going to have two different MOAs because we're going to have a different grant on one end and a gr different grant on the other end, and then... Um, also, you know, we're having likely to have different teams, and so we're connecting with different people, and so that's all good stuff. So um, hopefully, you know, you're going to find that is for those of you that have physical activity grants, um, you can uh, capitalize on that opportunity too. Um, in terms of some of these other things, I don't want to spend too much time rehashing or repeating some of the conversation that we had last last week at the state coordinator call, I think the biggest opportunity for all of us, and especially those of us that have new community eligibility options um, in your state, we know it's been rolled out in um, 11 states in the past three years. Um, some of your states were in those first rollouts, and now it's rolling out the rest of the country. So um, I think being able to tap into those lists uh, that are on, you know, you can get there through this link in this, um, through the USDA, which really is going to take you to your state's um, food and nutrition um, lists that are available anyway. So, you know, hopefully you've already found these locations. Has anyone gone on and been able to find them or get any information that's led you to additional schools? Yeah, I have a question about that, Ellen. Um, there's this question. Um, I was wondering, I did find the list, and I was going to, um, I connected with one school district. So is that list the people who are eligible, or is that list the people who are eligible and also implementing? Um, I believe, because I believe the they didn't have to post the, those that are doing both are eligible and are choosing to implement in that that fashion until the end of June. So likelihood is that it's those that are qualifying for community okay. eligibility. Um, and okay. the ones that I did a quick look at, um, and if we go if we go to the site, um, I pulled up a couple recently just to check them, and what I ended up seeing was that it's definitely um, those that are um, qualifying, and then you can kind of see, and you can see how they qualify too, so um, I'll try to pull up one real quick, and we can kind of talk through it a little bit and see what it looks like. Um, the way it's organized and the ones that I saw, and I think I pulled up Indiana, for example. Let me just double check it. Um, but okay. Maybe it wasn't Indiana. List of sites potentially. Okay. So here is uh, a list of sites that are potentially um, 
eligible for community eligibility. And so the way it's, it was organized when I saw it is that it's going to be So this is a spreadsheet. Now this is a little different. So here they list the county, they list the um, the type of school, and I guess if it's part of different school districts, and then it also lists the school's name. So if you see here, you can see the total enrollment. Um, you can see here is how they're determining their direct certification numbers. So this means um, SNAP is based on their food stamp qualifications, and so. Um, that's one way of certifying them. And then, so this is pretty low right here, but then we start to see the numbers are rising up. This is around 33%. Um, and let's see if we can find one that's got a higher percentage. Okay, so here they've already outlined them, those in green. So this is Fort Wayne Community School. Um, this would be a school that would qualify. So as you can see, those schools didn't. Uh, these do. And then there's going to be some that are going to be really close. And they're, look, they put them in yellow. Now, that's how Indiana organized theirs. I've seen others where it's a chart with um, those that are close to qualifying. And those that are close to qualifying doesn't mean that they might not be doing it or close anyway, because they might have really high free and reduced numbers and things like that. So those are really the schools that you might want to be thinking about targeting. Um, looking at a school like down here is probably not the best suggestion to waste your time communicating with, um, unless you have a connection with them or something like that. But as you can see, they've already done a lot of the work for you. They either organized it, they list the schools, they list the districts. So really, the best strategy I would take is to connect with the district, the district food service, and say, hey, I see, you know, what is it, 20 schools or 10 schools are going, you know, qualify for community eligibility. Do you plan to do that? Or maybe you know more about the district, too. I, I'm taking this as cold. I don't know anything about Fort Wayne Community Schools. So um, you might know that they've already got alternative. They've already got universal. And so maybe the question is, hey, do you have anything that you want to do differently at some of these schools that we can help fund to move their participation rates up to that 85% mark? That's, that's the strategy then on that end, too. Anybody have any other thoughts or gone through and looked at any of these? All right, so um, one of the things that we wanted to do, too, is just really give you guys a chance to say what's working for you. Um, so, you know, we talked about targeting high schools and middle schools. We talked about the physical activity grants. We talked about asking if they have additional schools. Like I said on the state coordinator call, I called schools. And I said, hey, and that, you know, while we're not saying, um, we're not advertising that they've been funded, you can say, unofficially, I can say that you've been funded, um, it, but the award notification doesn't come out till next Friday. However, do you have any other schools that you could maybe move that, you know, add something similar to? I've gotten, I think, almost 10 applications come in in the last two weeks by just doing that. You know, having a conversation with a school school uh, food service district, um, and they said, oh, I thought this was just for elementary schools, or oh, I didn't realize I could bring my middle schools or high schools on. You know, so those, you know, sometimes they just have these misconceptions, and I don't know if it's because, um, you know, maybe they were thinking, oh, they were talking about an elementary school for, and they were talking about three elementary schools. They never thought about adding their middle or high school. Has anybody done that? I've done that here in Kentucky with a district that's a small district that had um, received one universal grant because of a uh, breakfast, a kitchen manager who had attended a regional um, school nutrition association training session. And so that person came back and was all energetic and submitted an application. Um, However, some of the colleagues were not maybe as motivated. 
but in now going back to the um, school nutrition director for the district to say the funding is very favorable for your school that took the initiative, the, the director is now talking with their individual um, schools to say, okay, I want, you know, I want our whole district to get on board. So they are in the process of looking what's going to work within their school buildings and to um, also be persuasive for some of the administrators to see about um, modifying how things are done because there was a, an administrator at one of the schools that was very reluctant to do anything outside of the cafeteria and the food service director wanted to do a grab and go and so there's a little bit of a a dialogue that's going on right now in, within that district. Um, so it hasn't been yet determined, but they there is some increased interest now mm -hmm. because the the first one is on board, and so could they get some of their colleagues to get on board? Yeah, and sometimes that's it, it. Almost becomes a oh well, you're getting money. Oh well, how do I get it? Or something like that. Or maybe it's just enough to leverage them over the hump and. Um, so, you know, don't guarantee them funding or don't say, I, I know for sure. You, you can say unofficially because you pretty much have seen the list. You know who's being funded. Um, you know, we've, we, we've moved those that we could around as best we can and, and gotten, you know, I think we're down to maybe 15 maybes. And we had, I think, about over 100 maybes back in May. Um, because that's and that's how many we've had to go back and do changes on and things like that. So um, that's just one more strategy you can use. Um, you know what? I'm going to call a couple of you out because I know a couple of you have had some success in working with some of these schools. Kelly, um, would you share some of the things that have worked for you? I know that North Carolina, you've gotten a lot of the Universal Breakfast Grants in. Um, you know, what has worked or what have been some strategies that have worked for you? I mean, short of harassing people and stalking them, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, one thing, Caroline had sent us the list of the individuals that had joined the webinar, so that was a really great tool to use because some of the people on that um, maybe were reluctant or, or that it was just not a good time for them. I think sometimes when we all have a lot going on and maybe the webinar was at a time when certain people were overwhelmed or busy and they kind of just put it aside and thought, I don't have time to do that, and then maybe you a couple weeks later, they get a follow-up email, and they're like, oh, okay, maybe I can do it now. And um, making those phone calls, like you said, if they showed any interest at all, I was willing to pick up the phone and have a conversation. And one district, the child nutrition director, had said that it just seemed like it was a lot of work for the grant. And so we just kind of talked through what she thought, and um, you know, she realized that it really was very doable and ended up submitting 14 different applications. So um, I think those conversations with people and just saying, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you with that, so you don't need to, you, know, you don't need to worry about the, the, all of those pieces. That's what we're here for to help and assist. So that was helpful. And then um, working with our Department of Public Instruction, Child Nutrition, um, they've been putting it out in their newsletter every week to all the child nutrition directors across the state. So um, that's been helpful, and um, just really reaching out to those child nutrition directors specifically and following up with them. And oftentimes it's, it's many emails um, and then the phone calls, what seems to be reassuring to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say the phone calls, and, and ironically, I just got to the point where I couldn't look at another email and try to decipher what they were trying to do or, you know, where they weren't answering a question that I was posing or I knew the state coordinators were busy, so I just literally started picking up the phone and any time that there was a question, it wasn't, okay, let someone else do it. All right, let me just call them. And then literally they're like, oh, that's an easy, or oh, yeah, we're, oh, so thank you for calling. And oh, that's, you know, that information was wrong. Um, if you see like something that comes up, because a lot of the data pieces um, and in terms of enrollment and free and reduced numbers, if you see that they come up and they look off, call the school and check. Because I called a couple of schools that came up as um, really low for free and reduced, but they were wanting to do universal. And I said, 
yeah, you know, what is your free and reduced? And they said, oh, it was like 51%, which is still on the lower side. But, um, you know, I think it came up as 38. So at, at 38, I'm like, there's no way this full lunch is going to, you know, do universal breakfast. So I think if there are anything that comes up as red flags, pick up the phone because it's just so much easier than to just say, than to say no. I mean, it, it could be wrong. And then you're saying no because it's something that has, you know, that could be easily changed and fixed. So um, thank you, Kelly. Yeah, and, and Kelly has done a great job. And, every you know, everyone has done a great job. We know that it's been, like she said, short of harassing. <laughs> <I'm talking. laughs> um, and we know that's a lot of times uh, what it feels like. But um, that's a, those are all great strategies and being able to, um, you know, talk people, talk to people and share about it is it, so much, I think, more powerful than just sending an email. Because um, emails, they get lost, they don't go in the, they go into spam, they don't get read, and if you've been, you know, maybe emailing them about other things, or they've been getting a lot of emails from extra healthy kids in general, then, you know, maybe they're just ignoring it too. So um, a phone call just seems to be an easier method. Um, anyone else want to share any of their successes that they've had? Now, I know Hannah um, in Indiana, she recruited a district, came in with 14 schools, um, and she doesn't even have, you know, breakfast isn't a focus of her state or of her job, but um, that she was able to, you know, connect with a district that had interest and brought in 14 schools. Hannah, do you want to talk a little bit about maybe your experience? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, just making sure. Um, actually, um, I don't really, <laughs> I, I guess it was just pure luck um, of how I ran across this district, and they read about the, you know, the breakfast grant opportunities within um, my monthly newsletter. They were on my sister for the state, and I mentioned it. I, I always mention the opportunity, even though we're not a, um, mm -hmm. technically a breakfast funded state. Um, just to let people know what's out there, and I uh, got a hold of their nutrition, the nutrition uh, there in Lawrence Township, and just kind of ran with it. And she actually, she although had 14 schools finally submit, in the beginning she thought she wasn't going to uh, meet the deadline of May 2nd, and so I just worked her through that, and she said, you know, what are my chances? And I said, well, we're, we're really seeking, you know, district-level grant recipients, so... I would say that there could be a high chance that you would get approved. So um, I was, I think, just lucky my, my second year out to, to get a hold of her. So, um, and I've just kept keeping the, the message out to my previous funded schools for physical activity, just letting them know that it's available, and then passing along to our steering committee and, and those that, that I'm connected with. So Great. Super. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, Annie, are you still on the call? You might be muted, or maybe you had to jump off. Okay, so one of the things I did do, um, does anybody else, before we move on to talking about making sure these grants are fundable, because that, you know, we know our timeline is going to be a little bit more tight as we move through. I mean, we're talking mid-June now, um, and end of June is the due date, and then we'll be turning them around pretty quickly. Um, is there any question or any other suggestions for recruiting schools or any questions that you want to have that you want to hear what other people have done? Any pushback that you've gotten and that you want to see maybe what other people might have done or might have been able to turn that pushback into a positive? Okay, if you think about it. I was going to say, in trying to help a, a school that was a, a maybe um, and trying to convert them into a yes, I had a conversation with um, them about some of the activities that they could do to help raise awareness within their, their school district and ha um, the idea of having uh, inviting a, a local hero or celebrity. And so some things that they could be doing that may not actually cost a lot of money 
but could raise some visibility and encourage families to um, consider, if they have not previously considered having breakfast, how they could, um, that it would become the, the cool type of activity to do, especially mm -hmm. at the elementary school level, that they're, they would be having breakfast with firefighters or mm -hmm. policemen, or, you know, that there would be this mm -hmm. type of a, a positive role model that would be coming in for the students. And um, we had also talked about doing some door um, hanger type of activities so that they were already having um, breakfast being offered, but it was not as well received or well regarded. And so what they could do to enhance the visibility, and um, that was something that they really liked doing. Um, also, Ellen had made a suggestion in one of our calls about the question to find out whether the school was offering just cold breakfast and what could be done by off uh, could they increase their participation levels by offering um, a warm breakfast. And so the whole idea of having the insulated bags and um, a, a cart that might be able to help keep things, uh, the Cambro warming cart, that that would be an appropriate type of um, expenditure through the grant and would allow them to do something differently than what they've been doing in the past to make breakfast more palatable for students. Yeah. And I think too, um, especially when it came to that, I saw that in somebody's grant application. Um, you know, we were on the fence as to whether we would fund a school and it would look like they already had, based on their tactics previously, universal and breakfast in the classroom and then they were continuing universal and breakfast in the classroom, so we're like, well, they already have it. What, why do they need, what do they need? And then as we went through it, we're like, oh, that's interesting. They wanted to add another option as to be able to serve some warm um, breakfast and not just cold breakfast. So that was, you know, I was like, oh, all right, I can see how that could help boost the participation. They, had, you know, they were doing a pretty good level of participation, but then you're thinking, okay, I can see how that might take it up the notch to that 85%. So, great. Um, anyone else have any other thoughts before we move on to talking about fundable grants? Any other questions? Anything that you want feedback on from anybody else? This is the opportunity. Okay. All right. So um, we're not asking you to complete a uh, review matrix um, for any of the grants that come in between now and um, really going forward. Um, However, we really, really need to make sure that when we, we get them on our end, it's really just a matter of yes, no. Um, and hopefully they're not no's, because why would we want to get to that point? So they're really at that yes point. So what you need to do is just make sure that if you're in communication and someone is going to um, work on it, ask them to let you review it before they hit submit. They can, um, review, they can be entering it in on the portal, and then you can log in and view it, or they can send it to you in a Word document, um, whatever it is. But if, if you can just make sure that you are looking at a couple of things. Um, we're not as sticklers for the SMART objectives, um, because we know we're dealing often with food service um, staff that are filling these out, and that might not be you know, something that they're familiar with or, um, you know, as comfortable or as knowledgeable on. So what we're really looking at is their project plan, that their timeline um, includes some things that make sense around their project plan, and that their budget makes sense. So if, for example, they put um, a grab and go on their tactic, but they don't mention it anywhere in their project plan. You know, maybe they give you lots of other details, but they never mention that grab and go. Well, we see that a lot. Then we usually end up going to their timeline. Does their timeline talk about purchasing a cart? Does their timeline talk about, um, you know, putting in, you know, a wireless point of sale system or something like that? And then if that 
still doesn't show it, then we're looking into their budget. Does their budget have any type of purchase? And then sometimes we don't see any of those things. And then we're like, all right, well, what's going on at this school? Are they really doing a grab and go? What's it looking like? Um, and that, so if you can make sure that all of those pieces are really in place, and not, and not saying that everyone has to have kiosk because then maybe they already have a kiosk or maybe they're doing something different in terms of the way they're doing a grab and go or but make sure it makes sense and that it's somewhat clear of a plan they don't need to have you know everything under the sun about their project but if they have some like the key components that will really help us um, so if they're doing breakfast in the classroom we should be able to see that you know they're going to do trainings on um, for their teachers that they're going to roll it out um, to students that they're going to purchase the insulated bags or other types of purchases that would make sense for breakfast in the classroom and if they have all of those like equipment items because sometimes they have other funding that's supporting all of that um, what do they want our money for? You know, there has to be something that our money is going towards that's really going to create that, help create that sustainability too. Sometimes it's trash cans, sometimes it's trash liners, sometimes it's wipes, sometimes it's, you know, um, placemats in the classroom if it's breakfast in the classroom. So make sure, you know, that they create some plans that make sense there. Um, Double check that they're not putting down food. <laughs> the only food, and we can't say it enough times, but the only food that can be on their budget is food for taste tests. And even then, I mean, it should not be a thousand dollars for food for taste tests because then, you know, then that's really not going to be a sustainable piece, and it's not creating anything other than, um, you know, money that's in and out. So um, just kind of double check that that piece. And then lastly, um, if they're indicating universal breakfast, make sure they know what universal breakfast is. <laughs> I talked to a school that was like, oh, I thought universal breakfast just meant that breakfast was available for all students. I said, well, it is, but it also is free. And they're like, oh, no, no, we don't want to do that. I'm like, okay, and that's fine. You don't have to. but. You know, if you make, if you choose the universal breakfast bread, please, you know, understand that that means it's free for all students, not just free for the free students, because that's not really anything different. Um, and, and Caroline, anything else that you can think of that you want to suggest or, you know, remind people when they're looking at these um, grants? Yeah, I mean, um, state coordinators have done a fantastic job going back to the schools to revise for budgets. Um, I know, Ellen, you already mentioned really looking at their budgets to see what they have put in for their types of equipment or um, incentives and so forth. Uh, we've had to go back to schools because we've seen you know, an exorbitant amount of funds going towards incentives or funding going towards foods or things like that. Um, or you know, the equipment was just iPads. Um, so, you know, those are little small red flags that we can easily follow up with the school and have them make adjustments to their application so that way, you know, they've already started this process. We can work with them to ensure that they have a strong application. It's, you know, a project that they're able to implement and we can easily fund them. Any questions, like maybe as to maybe something that we flagged that you didn't catch in your original reviews, or you wanted to talk about maybe any examples of something that you were wondering about, or how to, um, or what to do with a school that you know you might not know what to do with? Do you have any tips on schools that previously were participating but are now concerned about the increased cost with require the uh, fruit requirement, fruit or vegetable requirement, and so that they are now kind of backtracking on whether they're going to be offering the universal breakfast? 
So let me make sure I understand your question. Are we experiencing any schools that thought they were going to be able to do universal, but because of the fruit requirement for breakfast, they were thinking they need to change their? Correct. The, 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 I have the not cost. seen that. Um, now, it could, it, could it happen once we award them? Maybe. But I think because the breakfast requirements were out before our grant, for example, it's not like something that's new that they didn't know was coming down a pike, so to speak. Um, I think they should have probably anticipated that. Um, but we're not getting anyone that's saying, oh, never mind, I don't want that. Now, could it happen once we award them? Possibly. Um, and I guess we'll have to deal with that at that time. And, and, and probably we'll deal with that on a school-by-school -school situation. Thank you. No problem. Any other question? Any questions at this point? So we've got like about five minutes. You know, let's we'll use this time. Anything that anybody wants to know what anybody else has done or anything like that? Okay, so uh, at this point, where are, the portal is open, the grants are ready, they're, um, you know, if you have a paper application and it's a physical activity for a physical activity school, um, then just let us know and we will work to, um, you know, figure out how we're still working on how those are going to be entered. Um, but go ahead and send them our way for right now. and. Um, you know, do the best you can. We really, really appreciate everything you've done. It, we know it's been um, a hard process. We know not having that portal open was hard. So we know a lot of schools entered applications in wrong because they didn't know what they were doing and they just were trying to apply and they really wanted universal. And then, so at this point, it's really going to be now like let's capture those that are either. Um, Meet, our, meet the criteria and it makes sense, or like somebody else that we know had interest but couldn't participate in the past because of the um, quote unquote double funding situation. Um, so hopefully with those additional opportunities, the community eligibility data, we can really get those extra schools in. Um, you know, it, at the end of June, we'll be able to evaluate and say where we are and where we're going. And, um, you know, our goal is if we can, it would be wonderful if we could close it up earlier um, rather than, you know, continuing to recruit over the summer um, or coming, taking, you know, some quiet time and then recruiting harder as schools come back into session um, August or so. Yeah. Um, yeah, go ahead. Something that has been helpful is in reaching out to some schools that now look that their, their funding is favorable, to ask those food service directors if they have colleagues in neighboring districts. Mm. I think there had been a, a earlier a little bit of, shall we say, competition, mm -hmm. and that if my district, I am potentially competing with other districts mm -hmm. to be awarded mm -hmm. funding, so I may not tell my colleagues because I, I don't want to have as much competition, right? But if they are now being, you know, assured, yes, your district has been approved, yes, it's very favorable for you, then they may be a little bit more receptive to be talking to their colleagues to say, you know, it wasn't that difficult for me to put together the application. Mm, and that they are not, they're not being, um, I guess you'd say, in that competitive mode. Mm -hmm. They can be a little bit mm -hmm. more of a collaborator or the the um, leader among their peers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I like that strategy. Yeah. Anyone else um, have anything that they want to ask or share? OK, so Caroline and I are available if you need um, any assistance, any help. If you need us to jump on a call with you, with a district, with a school, you know, we're happy to do that. Um, if you're not sure about something and you want to run it by us before they hit submit, do that too. We're happy to, you know, do some pre 
review process too. Um, anything that we can do to help, we will. Um, right now we're also working to create um, some target messaging um, using our database that will really focus on certain states as well as um, you know, on certain buzzwords around community eligibility, whether it be um, alternative models or whatever the case may be. So we're working on some of those things too. We're throwing around the idea of working with some of our partners, FRAC, School Nutrition Association, Dairy, to do a joint webinar on um, how to apply for breakfast grants or how to or what to do with breakfast grants. We're still in the discussion phase. Um, hopefully we can pull something like that together and be able to get multiple partners talking about what they've got available as well as, um, you know, that how a breakfast grant can impact a school. So we're working on our end. That's the best we can do, too, and get things moving along. Um, if you need anything at all, please just let us know. And if we if we can help you connect with others um, that might have a similar experience, we'll do that too. So just let us know what you need. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we'll follow up with the recording um, and some of the, the text that we've been able to copy here. And, um, you know, just let us know what you might need in, in terms of support and help.